And I guess the million dollar question here is, where do you think the regulatory authorities will end up with regards to pharma engaging online? I very much hope that they stay very open, so they allow within the constraints that pharma has and the very real ethical responsibilities, but to allow as much open dialogue and engagement with patients and with clinicians as possible, uh, and then not go to a position where every discussion that we have with patients and clinicians has to um, be signed off at senior level, but actually people can take responsibility, people know what's right and what's wrong, and we can have more of a real-time discussion with the public and with patients, and I really hope the regulations facilitate that in the future and continue to facilitate that and don't take a backward step. Based on your experience, Gary, what channels do you think you've seen work best in terms of pharma engaging with patients, with prescribers, perhaps even with payers? Again, there's a lot of really good examples of what's, what's worked well uh, and what hasn't. The absolute important thing is to take it a step back and really understand what you're trying to achieve online, what's the objective, and then really look at what channels are right. Because Facebook, YouTube, they might actually be great channels, um, but it may be a case of actually you want to direct patients to some existing information, high quality information that's out there, curating information. Um, so it really depends on the, on, on the strategies. There's no one solution fits all. And taking a helicopter view, what do you see as the really big game changers with regards to pharma playing online? Well, overall, the things that I hear talked about, and this is cross-industry, so not just pharma, there's a lot talked about mobile, there's a lot talked about local, and there's a lot talked about social. So we've covered social, very important for pharma to engage, to listen. Uh, in terms of local, so you've got applications like Foursquare, where patients can, uh, and this is, people can check into anywhere, whether they be coffee shops, cinemas, but actually it's very interesting to see, you've got patients who are checking in online to their local GP surgery, their local hospital and they're actually making comments around the standard of medical care that they've received or even the fact that the, the, the coffee in the hospital cafe is, is not up to standard and you can see those sort of comments and, and that will definitely increase in the future. The other piece around mobile, I saw that Google recently announced um, an initiative of thinking mobile first for everything they do and that's certainly something that pharma need to do. People, whether they be patients or the public, they want to consume information on the move and they want to be able to share it on the move. So it's so important that pharma keeps up with the pace in terms of, in terms of mobile technology. What do you see as the critical success factor, so the key things that pharma has to get right with regards to digital engagement? The one broad thing that I would pick is really around the whole marketing planning cycle, which hasn't changed since the evolution of digital but it's aligning everything that we do digitally with that cycle. And what I mean with that is starting off with the insights and the strategy, really understanding where the clinicians are now, where the patients are, and then where we want them to get to, what we're actually trying to achieve. And then underneath that, how we actually get them there in terms of some of the tactics we use, the online tactics, and so making sure that pharma understands all the tools that are out there and they can apply those, but apply those critically in the right situation, again aligned to the strategy. And the final part of that planning cycle, which is really, really important for me, is the understanding of whether what's actually been done has been successful or not, uh, and then measuring every element, digital and offline, and seeing how that's actually contributed. And I'm not just talking about numbers, but actually understanding whether it's actually achieved a specific objective, whether it's to get a patient to go to a GP surgery, whether that's actually happened, not whether a thousand people have viewed your YouTube video, but what's actually happened as a result. And finally, Gary, if I ask you just to look into your crystal ball for a moment, how do you see pharma engaging online in five years' time? What I hope happens, and what I really think will happen, optimistically, is that pharma will be engaging with clinicians and patients, having an on online dialogue, discussion, and doing that as just something that they do, something that's the right thing to do, but not thinking it's any big deal. It will just become standard practice. Gary, thanks very much for your time, and good luck in your new role. Thanks, Paul.